and uh, let me encourage a single a single lady mwenye ana 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 that single lady mwenye ana trust god for a good marriage amen and uh, i want to tell you before you say a single man is no perfect marriage is no perfect man okay and most of us especially as us ladies tunaona hundred hundred percent expectation eh? yes. so one thing I, I, I want to start with make sure your expectation is zero before you start you say a big amen eh? expectation yako ni kwa zero na kama kuna something now chini ya zero chukua hiyo sasa okay yes so tell me so that I think most of us tunataka na tu about waiting to do it now now life in Azanga after okay in Azanga hapo uh in between ups and downs eh? mm-hmm. but i thank god i thank god for the mountains i thank god for those valleys kuna mm-hmm. some years back like five years ago see you understand that but i thank god because one thing when god anapatia and he gives you a battle eh? yeah. and uh, when you went through something most of the times god mkana kwanga me kushika so one thing anafanya ni kukushape anakushape you know you know God more you love him more yani a lot of things a lot of things eh? so and marriage is good it and is. marriage is beautiful Amen. it is so so beautiful Amen. but when it comes to those challenges i think that you can you have to pass your test and this marriage lazima you pay you pay certificate kianza si ukienda most of the shules ukienda pp1 una ukienda grade 1 una pay your certificate Uki ukimaliza form 4 unapewa certificate. Ukienda university unapewa certificate. Now this one unapewa certificate ukianza. I don't know why by the way. Because I think God alone na tuwa wa say. Kuna bila tu. So eh God ni kwa tu people tumepitia ups and downs. Say to trust in God many many things. Kuna bits zingine bado still yes share it is not mature. Yeah but I've been trusting God for a business. Me and love business. Um even the poor and I'm going to be a business. So, nimekuwa wa home for a while. Trusting God for this business. And like around April, I can provide away. Amen. I can provide away. Amen. And then struggles tend to come. And I provide but I don't have to finish one thing I've learned. Mm, most of us don't have a lot of money to start business but let me tell you this one is a challenge in many ways something very small like this and then and I make to a way yani because i remember around april to part a shop and this shop the lady when you go up alikuwa na kwa deposit so to can buy rent but for deposit and then so that go to expect this lady i talk is as we start our business around may there and then all of a sudden this lady akadisaidia sasa tena atoki akakaa kidogo kidogo tu lalo la ndege akanikola akaniambia nao amesema hataka kuza yeye uko na beauty shop hataka kuza hizo kitu za beauty shop and then sasa now we move in akatupia another two weeks two weeks this lady akaleta another lady sasa wako na share na place ni pata nini shop that place it's very nini for you to get a shop yani ni ni kama unatoka kama wengine wameshaingia but now eh yeah, god ali provide yani i remember that lady called you eh, asking for my number because i need to i just ana na yangu but she knows me because bi mnunuli yangu so the way god ana make her way yani in mysterious way i make sure this lady ametumia this lady kutafuta namba yangu ali call aliambia nao kuna shop mahali and finally we got a shop amen na tukaanza last week saturday amen ni mwanaisha wa mama wa mama wa nare karibu sana yes and thank god and for that day i say glory to god amen niko na unatrembesha aje what i'm selling tops oh yeah i'm selling tops i'm selling business cards everything anything about a woman I know you can lady. You can you can beat the dance like you know. Can you do that? I I can make a baby step. Baby step. Yeah, so they can go. Yes. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. If you're giving thanks even during this hot moment, I want you to give it up for Jesus like you mean to want to go. Amen. We cannot afford to be quiet in the house of the Lord. Do you know there are people who want to be where you 
were, but they don't have that chance. So we cannot afford. The Bible says, says if you cannot praise Jesus, what will Jesus do? Command God. Imagine all of these stones. No, 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 Imagine all of them getting up and starting to dance for Jesus and you're seated there. So I'm gonna give you one more chance to shout for Jesus like you mean it. If you know Jesus, come down, Why are you seated down? Don't go hesitate. Like it's mama too. Oh my god. I want us to give it up for Jesus like we mean it, like we have a revelation, like people who are blessed of the Lord. Being in the house of the Lord at this time, it doesn't take our strength. It is not because of who you are, Mary. It is not because of the ring on your finger.
because I don't want to lose my job. But then again, my spiritual life is going low. Because sina time you pray, sina time you and you know a restaurant like the work late. Sina time you pray, sina time you go to church. I'm feeling bad about it. So I told her before you do that when she was to, like to, when I was listening to the message, the thing that kept on coming into my inner man was the uh, nani, uh, the fast of Nani Esther. The way Esther fasted for three days. And I kept on hearing it. So when I, I was done listening to it, I said, before you quit your job, because she was at the place of like quitting. I said, before you quit your job, why not pray for three days? Try and fast however best you can, and just get to hear the will of God. And that is what she did. So Jana, and she was so happy. She was telling me, mom, guess what? My manager, now the manager was frustrating her with the issue of coming to work on Sunday. She, she, she needed to go for leave for one month. But before, instead of going for leave for one month, she ended up getting a job elsewhere. For her, it was a major testimony. As in that manager is no longer in that restaurant, so I, I was <coughs> born in China. And then God brought another man, because I know you, 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 you love going to church. Me, I'll be working in the morning hours, when I put afternoon. Was her prayer answered? Yes. She was so happy, she could not stop telling me how she is excited because now she can come to church freely and then at the end of the afternoon. The only thing she can miss, maybe in certain meetings afternoon, but at least she came in the morning. Yes. So we really thank God for that. That is all I was saying for her, it is a testimony. Her post would testify and say, This girl cannot miss church. I pray and hope that it is the same for all of us. And then for Esther, they have really believed in God for a job. And I remember the last time we had DOZ, I was telling you to, to, to share the same testimony. But so we really thank God for that. And we pray that God will continue to bless the work of your hearts, that your job will continue to grow. And that anyone else who has a desire for a business, by the way, okay, no, yeah. it's a Kuchoma. <laughs> I'm believing in God for a business as well, most likely in January. I'm thinking of doing a daycare. I love babies and I don't mind doing it. So I'm going to be able to do And anyone else, <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, but I love kids, so I don't mind. So I'm thinking in January to go that way. And anyone who has a desire for business, I'm telling you, it takes the hand of God. Belma can tell us. She has been in business for quite some time, but it takes the hand of God to run a business to even begin. And I, I know beginning is even the worst. Yeah. It is really difficult, but God is faithful. So are you ready for the word for today? Yes. Amen. Did you come with your notebook, your Bibles and your pen? Yes. Yes. The yes is yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so before I, I say many things, I like sharing what I feel uh, with, the, with the clip. Do, is the clip ready? Uh, so, so before that, our message for today is preserved for a move of God. You can go ahead and write that down. Preserved for a move of God. And then, yes, Linda, thank you. You can kindly let's listen to it and learn something from it. The bloody civil war had ended. Business was booming in Chicago. The streets were buzzing with economic activity. At the center of this commerce was respected attorney and real estate investor Horatio G. Spafford. But in 1871, the great Chicago fire consumed the Windy City and Horatio lost a fortune. Near the same time, his own son, age four, died of scarlet fever. Horatio drowned his grief in work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 people who had been left homeless. By November of 1873, he decided it was time to take his wife and daughters to Europe. Horatio loved the preaching of his friend and evangelist D.L. Moody and the music of Ira Sankey. He planned to visit their meetings in England and then enjoy a much needed vacation. As they were about to leave, an urgent business matter detained Horatio in New York. He decided to send his wife, Anna, and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Anna, and Bessie, on ahead. As he saw them settled into the cabin aboard the luxurious French liner Ville de Hoeve, an unease filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. 
he kissed them goodbye, promising to join them soon. During the late night hours of November 22, 1873, as the Ville de Hoove glided over smooth seas, the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship had collided with an iron sailing vessel and water poured in like Niagara Falls. The Ville de Hoove tilted dangerously. Screams and prayers merged into a nightmare of unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to posts, tumbled through the darkness, and were swept away by powerful currents of the icy Atlantic Ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into foaming blackness. The mighty ship vanished beneath the waters. The 226 fatalities included all his daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Anna, and Bessie. They were gone beneath the waves. Mrs. Spafford was found nearly unconscious clinging to a piece of wreckage. When the 47 survivors landed in Cardiff, Wales, she cabled her husband, saved alone. Horatio immediately booked passage to join his wife. En route on a cold December night, the captain called him aside and said, I believe we are now passing over the place where the Ville de Hoove went down. Shock, sadness, and despair filled Spafford's heart as he went to his cabin. In those lonely moments of the night, the Spirit of God spoke words of hope to him as he said to himself, It is well, the will of God be done. He later wrote this famous hymn based on those words. Its words have become a beacon of hope to all those that have suffered loss. I've always had a story behind uh, that song, which is when with my soul. Until when I was getting ready for today, I just thought of like uh, going to the internet and just checking it out. I just get to know what the story behind it is, and I'm telling you, it it must have been really sad for that man. Because you see, when I say man, initially he had how many children? Five, and then uh, he was he was a lawyer who was doing really well in business, and then his firstborn son died. His only son, he died out of out of what? Yes, out of a disease. <laughs> uh, yes, that one. So he died, and then Kidogo Kidogo, all his businesses, his wealth was uh, like there was a fire, and everything that he had, all his property were burnt down. And then Kidogo Kidogo, they are thinking to, uh, with his family, why not go for a vacation? Try not to at least just unwind. And I know many times you get to that place. And then he, uh, just before they, they were able to alight uh, on a ship, uh, he got a, a, like a business uh, shuguli, a kapata shuguli he needed to attend to. And then he decided, let my family, what are I done, and all the wife and the four daughters, and they were meant to go ahead of him, and then he, he would follow them later. Not knowing that was the last time that he was going to see his family. A few days or a few months later, he gets, he gets a telegram from the wife, and apparently there was an accident, and all their children had died. I'm telling you, if for those who are mothers, for those who have brothers and sisters, I know it was really hard for him. Kuskupata your message, when the wife said it, that saved alone. And when I think of the story of that man, I think of Job. The way Job lost everything that he had. 
But it's not for this man, even for Job as well, it, it, it did not just happen in vain. It's not like that it happened and nothing good came out of it. Even after all that loss, could it be that God allowed it so that this song that is famous now that we have been singing for so many years later, that that song had to be birthed from that place? It is really sad. It was a sad situation. And I, I really don't know how many people would be able to endure that. Many people, if they got themselves in that place, they would really die. Not well, like you would commit suicide or something, because it is not a small thing. But out of all of that, something good came out of it. A song in here, to Kiwata, to Kiwachin, to Kiwa in our lowest places, a place where we can just go and sing and say, it is well with my soul, in Jesus' name. So um, the, the sermon that I'm sharing today with us, I told you it is called Preserved for a Move of God. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because you remember when Pastor Vicky was here? And you remember the, the prophetic word she gave us for the church? Yes, yes. you remember it? <laughs> you are very quiet. I just showed you something sad. It is sad, but something good came out of it. It is well with our souls. No matter what we go through, it is well with our souls. It's someone like that. Because later on, if you go and Google his story, later on, when they got three more girls, and they were able to serve the Lord and live happily ever after. As much as it was hard, something good came out of it. So when Pastor Vicky was here, she gave, she gave us a prophetic word as a child, and she said, we have been preserved for a move of God. For some reason, you know those things you already know, but and they just hit you like, like a brick of rocks, and you're like, what? For me, but then, like at the entire time she was here, the entire time she, she shared with us, I can't remember anything else she said apart from that. Alianza na hiyo and me I was done, as in look was sorted. You know that you come to church and you only need one sentence. Eh, I'm a just one word to heal you. Kisha pata hiyo, unatosheleka. For me that was, that, that really hit me, that really got into my inner man. Because if you can get to look at your life, kwa kutoka kwenye umetoka, kutoka kwenye ulizaliwa, even before you knew yourself, how come you're still alive today? How come you have age mates that you are together with in school and they are no longer here? How come there are women who aborted their children before they gave birth to them and you are here? Majority of us to kind of human to angalia vizuri. Labda tulizaliwa wazazi wetu wakiwa shule. Ama we were conceived when they were in school. And me being one of them. My mom conceived me when she was 17. And I don't know, maybe I will ask her. She's coming this Wednesday. <laughs> but probably she got to a place and she wanted, she wanted to abort me. Because at 17 and she was in school, she was in form 2. How come she didn't abort me? And there are so many girls, there are so many women, when they find themselves in a place like that, they always choose that the, the quickest thing is you live in a mama yako, a baba yako, you opt to just flush it. How come I wasn't flushed? How come you are not flushed? How come there are children who are born out of, out of rape and they are still here today? Is it a coincidence? Is it that God loves us more than the people who are not here today? Is it that there's something better we've done for the, than the people who are not here today? I'm glad uh, at least Bakaro's family are not here, because I wouldn't say this if they were here, but it is something we can learn from. How, how come Karo is not here today? Is it that none of us can be found uh, like, like with, with such a disease, with cancer? How come you're well? How come you can wake up in the morning and go do your business and be okay? How come you don't have cancer in your body? How come you didn't die last night? How come you go on a guide to Kujaba? I'm telling you, when you sit down and look and 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 look at your at your life critically, we will stop to to take life casually. We will stop to get to come to church and just consider it as just another Sunday. We will stop to come into a DOZ meeting and just feel like like Sazi and Sharaka so that I can go home do laundry. Maybe I know you have a job tomorrow. <laughs> Let me stay up. <laughs> I know you have a job tomorrow, but how come you have a job tomorrow? Imagine how many women out there are trusting in God for, for businesses. How many women, Esther, have been believing in God for 20 years for a business and our type of your opportunity? It is not that we are better than the people who are going through some difficult issues out there. It is not that we are better than, like, like Carol's family, when they say, but we are going to because of the loss of their dear daughter. But if you ask me, I know in my Noah that Carol finished her work. Because what I believe with God, number one, when you're a believer, when you're a born again believer, things don't just happen to you at haphazardly, to vitus in a and God is like, it happened. They don't. 
when things happen into our lives, especially something like death, God and Akwanga Meyona, and if you ask me, and maybe one day when I go to, to God, when I'm way old and, and that time has come, I would want to know, because me, I know, I would want maybe a confirmation from God, but I know Karo finished her work. If Karo's work, if her assignment was to take care of her baby girls, yes, you know Bibi and Melissa, our total, I'm telling you, at our Kakosa any more training, where they are right now, at our Kakosa Kukelepa church, where they are right now, those girls will never be lost. Not because of God per se, yes, God is playing a part, but Karo has done her due, due diligence in taking care of her children. See, let you go back to school. Let you not go back to school. I'm sorry. Teacher Velma is here, and she knows they are the girls who are well taught, girls who have been fed with the word of God. I remember even in the Bible, they had a chance, and they spoke. They say it as they were giving their tribute. They were saying that they will miss every morning how their mom used to pray with them. And I remember there was a time Karo and Bobby mentioned it, and they appear because now that girls have grown up. She doesn't wake up, she doesn't need to wake up early to prepare them. You know, like now when they are akina iya kwa dogo to nam kakwa tarisha kwa ita, kwa make a breakfast, kwa peleka shule and all of that. But now for her, she was telling me when I'm returning our own beka bla wa ende shule. I'm telling you if Carol's job, if her only job in the world was to take care of those children and lay a firm foundation in Christ, then she finished her work. She is getting her crown. She will, when the time comes, I know right now she's in, at the bottom of God, but I know a time will come and she will get her crown because she finished her, she finished her assignment. So the question is, that, is, is this for all of us who are here today. If today, if today was your last day and you went home and you didn't wake up because we would die with an accident and all of that funny, funny things. If you, tomorrow you woke up and found yourself on the other side, will you have finished your work? If your work was raising a God-fearing child, if your work was evangelizing to your colleagues, if your work was praying for your parents, if your work was whatever your work is, because I believe by now, at the age where we are, majority of us, will not do as I to. Will you have finished your work? Because there is no guarantee in this life. I couldn't have to I have 30 years to go. I couldn't, if you ask her on the day before she, she slept, because I know she slept, if you ask her if she was going anywhere, she would have told you in a corner. Because we were praying and we believed that God was going to heal her. But the question is, if your work finished today, Roda, will you have finished your work? Will you even have touched? May God help us. And maybe that you have place where we don't take life casually, where I told you to take a kind of car like that. But you've been a dumb who we have a tendency when we see things happening over and over again, we think in Kawaida. Kwanka kila subi si Kawaida. Going to bed when you've eaten, when, when you have your, your house has been paid for, when you have a husband, you have children, it is not a kawaida thing. So when Pastor Vicky said that you have been saved for a move of God, I'm telling you, you still took what you have, and I knew that was my work. Because there are times you get to a place and you're like, God, how come I am still alive? What is your plan for me? And I believe that is a very important place for each and every one of us to get to. When yeah, we don't just like live to like an unbeliever. You know an unbeliever, because they don't they don't believe in God. What happens to end the they provide for their families, it becomes a cycle over and over again, day after day, year after year. But for us who are believers, we have an understanding that we were not just created just to fill space. We were not just created just to be that family for, for no good reason. We are here for a reason. So if there is any one of us here who doesn't know their purpose in life, the amazing thing about God, he will not give you an assignment that you cannot fulfill. You're getting Like for example, I knew in my heart that Carol was a pastor's wife. When she rested before that, I don't even understand. But I would see her and I would see a pastor's wife. For some reason, that is what I would see in her. So, God cannot ask her a question as to why Kukwanini and Kufa before Kwebi Biyam Chungaji. <laughs> you get it? But if her other assignment was to become, uh, to raise her daughters in the ways of the Lord, then she, she finished that one. You get it? So, whatever is assignment God and Kupatia, be diligent with it. Many times, God is not even asking you to be a bonke, to go preaching to the whole world, because you've not gotten there. A time will come and you, will find, you may find yourself there. But from wherever you are, from as, as small as you are, when you are in Esther, your clients as they come, number one, I know you're a prayer woman. So pray before you go to work. When they come, you will, they will find a conducive environment. When you are a put you will open up, you will find yourself like being led to pray for them. When you are a you will preach to them and they receive Christ. 
That is your assignment for right now. So may God help us to be to be effective in the assignment that He has given us. So let me give you a few definitions and then we continue. Are you learning something? Yes. Amen. So preservation is the state of being preserved, especially to a specified degree. Preservation is the state of being preserved, especially to a specified degree. Preserved for a move of God. It is also to keep safe from injury, harm, or destruction. It is to keep safe from injury, harm, or destruction. That is definition from, according to, uh, from the dictionary. So it is also to protect, to keep alive, to keep intact, or free from decay. It is also to protect, to keep alive, to keep intact, uh, or free from decay. So that is preservation. So this is what we are talking about. God has kept us safe. He has kept us from injury. He has kept us from any kind of harm, from destruction. He has kept us intact, free from decay. And it is for a reason. God does not just do things. He does things for a reason. And you are here for a reason. So it is important for us not to trivialize being alive. It is important for us not to take it. You are a mother today for a reason. There is a reason why God has given you that child. There is no child in the world that is a mistake. If your work is to raise your child in the ways of the Lord, be found diligent doing that. And I know God has speaking to so that you know and understand what your assignment is because our assignments are different. So people who are preserved, let me give you a few examples of people who are preserved by God in the Bible. And I will begin with Jesus. I won't be long before you. I know we need to go home. So number one is Jesus. We are looking at a few examples. You can write uh, Matthew chapter 2 from verse 16 to 18. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 16 to 18. Linda, you can put it up. Thank you. And then majority of the time we will use the New King James Version. If we need to change, I will let you know. So the first example to me, someone in Ali? Jesus. Jesus. Matthew uh, chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. So the Bible says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all the uh, and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had been uh, determined from the wise men. So this is the time when Herod got to know that a king is being born. But you see, when Herod was told by the wise men that Kunafalme and Azaliwa, according to him, he thought it was a it was a king was coming to rule on the earth. So he felt threatened, and because of that, he ended up killing all children who are two years and below. Why? Because he was trained. The devil, because many times when the devil is using people, people don't understand. People think, I'm just making a rational decision uh, according to myself. But this, is the devil, this was the devil trying to take away Jesus before he was even born. So the children who were born at that time, from two years and below, were killed. But by the grace of God, we thank God, because the angel had, had already spoken to, uh, to, to Joseph and Mary, so that the, uh, baby Jesus would not be killed. Because God He had to stay here. So Jesus at that time was preserved for a move of God. It's, it is not like God was going to use him at that time, at, it, at that day, God knew that he would preserve him for a long time when he began ministry. He began ministry at how old? At the age of? <laughs> at the age of 30, you're saying like you're not sure, yes. He was preserved all the way to 30 years old when he was to begin his ministry. So Jesus was preserved for a move of God. And then the second one is Moses. We all know about Moses. The way at that time, Pharaoh and Kwameona, the Israelites had become to, to become so numerous. And he decided, they cannot, we cannot allow for the men to be born. Because you know when men are there, when you want to that is a, a sort of opposition. That men can grow up, Amma will grow up and come back to fight. So instead of that, uh, like, he decided, he spoke to the, to the, to the midwives. 
Akawambia, every time you're going to help the Hebrew women, but the, the, the midwife could not agree to do that. But now that again was the devil trying to stop Moses before he was even born. boys at that time But the issue was not the other boys who were being killed, ama who were meant to be killed. The issue was Moses. Because the devil had known. Because what happens, the devil may not know everything. He not may not know, that is the wrong word. The devil does not know what God has for you. But he has an inclination. He knows there is something special about this child. There is something special about this woman, about this man. He may not understand what, but anajua kuna kakirus. Then anajua kuna kakirus. Anajua kuna kitu chapanika uko mbele. So bada langote ya mtu wakua mkubwa, ufiko uko mbele, and then you end up uh, like fighting against him or defeating his kingdom. He goes like, I'd rather destroy you here and now. Amen. The children are here for the daughters of Zion. <laughs> Amen. So Exodus chapter 1 verse 22. The Bible says, you can go ahead and write that. Allow the babies to be babies. Exodus 1 and 22, the Bible says, So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born, you shall cast into the river, and every daughter who shall uh, who, uh, who shall save a life. Huh? And every daughter, life. or you shall save a life. Amen. How come they were not killing girls? Because the target was not a girl. The person that, that the devil was trying to attack was not in the girl gender. Ilikuwa from the boy gender. But now the devil knew But he knew there was something about Moses. So he ended up destroying and uh, trying to destroy all the men that were being born at that time. So we thank God that Moses was preserved for a move of God. So he later became he later became the deliverer of the children of Israel. Uh, number three, Noah. Noah, we can find it in Genesis 6:19. Noah, the Lord commanded Noah to build an ark in which his family and every living thing uh, of all flesh were to be saved from the flood. So Noah again, he was preserved by God. Imagine, I was, when I was preparing this, I was thinking about Noah and, uh, and I was like, what if Noah refused to enter into the ark? What would have happened? Eh? What would have happened? Tungekua? Because now someone needed to be preserved. There are people who needed to be preserved so that Roshiaro, what is Roshiaro in English? A generation. Yeah, so that the generation, so that people would continue like Kuzana and all of that until today. So uh, I thank God because Noah was, uh, was a man of God. He had a heart after God. So he was preserved because of that. Because many times the devil will not take you out in a death. I'm not talking about death today. I'm not talking about the devil taking people out only through death. He can take you through. Uh, he can take you out through many things. Like for example, a marriage, an abusive marriage. You can get. You remember like that Pastor today was talking about getting married wrong. You can get married wrong in a way you will never find yourself in church again. So if God had intended for you maybe to become a minister of the gospel, to become a pastor's wife, or 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 an evangelist, or or an intercessory, or anything like that. And then you end up getting married wrong. That one has sabotaged the plan of God. Mm -hmm. So he can take away, he take you away in so many ways. But I thank God because we are here to learn today that we are preserved for a move of God. That's nothing in our lives that happens. Ladies, single ladies, before you get married, I'm telling you when Pastor was talking about it today, for me, I felt like he was talking about what we are talking about right now. Let us be very careful to who we are getting married to. I have an auntie of mine. Unatua wame watu kutoka kitambo na watua wame wakoka. Like, uh, there was a time I lived in a meeting with, at my show shows. My, my parents were having issues with their marriage, so we went to stay there. My auntie was, kuna watu wame wakoka, na kuna watu wame wakoka, lakini kuna watu wame wakoka. You know? Kehana kwa, unatele kehana kwa ya ewe kwelo. As in, the, uh, back then, wakishani kikuwa, walikuwa nasama kuspeak in tongues, walikuwa naita. Uh, yes, yes. As in, she was really deep, as deep as they get. She was, she was, uh, she used to go to, you can say, full gospel. And who are full? Yeah, you to a Kwanza, and you don't have to God, and you don't have to and you don't have to and you don't have to go to I was very young. I think in class three, four, we got to go to and we got to go to the house, and we But then, a time came and she went to, to Mombasa. I think she was going to, to stay with her sister or something. Uko uko Mombasa, akapatana na kijama. Tell your neighbor kijama. And she got married. My auntie until today. She's sister to my mom. Until today. Ata yona kanisa kiroho. 
until today. And maybe she got married. She got married before me. I got married in 2008. Has she got married around 2006? Sapo, kituka iyo. Nata si zani si juka ni kani o arusi ya kanisa. Na ni wana tu ni kome jeka. You know, you know, you all embaka like Germans can't talk to them and things like that. As in, like she was pure and holy for God. But now she made. I have never sat down with her to understand what happened. Like how come she got married to that man? Because later on, a few years ago, I was able to talk to her and like to converse to Kwasimu kwa WhatsApp, you can hear her pain, you know, like when she's talking, her bitterness, but now it is what it is. And she's a mother of three girls, so you can't get them So in Tumanyata, I used to talk about her. But what happened, she got married to a Catholic man. When ye, I mean, I went down to the Kiroho. When ye, I think I don't know what happened, but we were talking, and it was something to do. We had prayers, I think, these prayers that you only, and I was telling her to talk about my own. Can I say to you, can I say to you, and then translate? And she went like, can I know what I'm going to As in, she was telling me, Are you happy? Do you feel happy that you're in a place? Where you can be able to pray, and I'm like, what is you can pray wherever you are. So the police are gonna go and be a canary now out because of going to a Catholic church. Could have been yet at a yo yo zili. I'm a own being. I have to speak in tongues and all of that. Zina fika na mahali zina kufa. And I really felt pity for her because now I could have been as I did. I'm as I did. I have an option to be the guy. But I pray that God will help her in some way because by the God I'm paying that. You get it. So for the single ladies, I'm telling you, you can get a tall, dark, and handsome man, and it is totally okay. I'm telling you, it is okay. Uh, when we say tall, dark, and handsome, we don't mean all of them are bad. You're getting All we're saying is, don't go looking at the outward. The Bible says that God does not look at the outward. He looks at the inside. So in a Zakuandio, from the outward, this man looks like they're happening. They look like they have it all. They're driving. They have a car. They have a good job. They have everything in order. But I think the plan of God for you, because if you get married to the wrong person, and I'm talking even to the single moms, who see when I'm being a kukimbilia kuwala wana mse, atituwa mekubali wa tuto wako. I'm telling you, awa tuto wa mekubali wana mungu, before wa kubali wana any other man, wa mekubali wana God. So it is very important, you take a minute and pause, and ask yourself, and especially in prayer, God, is this your will for me? Is this man the, the one that you have for me? Because I tell single ladies, you can make many mistakes. In the world, you can make a mistake in where you, where you work. You can make a mistake in friends that you have, like now, because monetization or tuna story is in your as in your life continues. You can make a mistake in where you're getting a house. You can make a mistake in where you to take your children to school. But if you make a mistake in the person that you get married to, I'm telling you, it can be hell on earth. In the air, even the plan that God had for you in Asia too. Ago, I was talking to I think it was to Janet last Sunday or last Sunday, but one, and I was telling her how before I met Percy, I was dating someone, and it looks like it was happening. Kuna benya lipa na katuna everything all together, but the the thing was he wasn't born again. Nilikuwa I was that naive girl. Nilikuwa na mombe au koke. I believed in all of my heart. Ushamba ya mtu ni yaka mingi ni mapenzi. Akiyo si ni mapenzi ya mani infatuation. We are not situated. I don't. I don't even know what it was. But I dated that guy for five years. I was praying for him. I never prayed for the country. I never prayed for my mom. I never prayed for myself personally. I was praying for him to get him. But he did. Imagine he did. Ako kukanga. I got to a place. And God is like kaka kaden. Kana waste time. And God gave me an ultimatum. I can be now you need to choose. It is either him or me. Now God. And it was the hardest thing I had ever had, had to do. Uh, before now losing the baby and everything. Now that one became hard. But at that point, it was really hard for Chana Naum say. Could they say five years? It's not a small thing. It is not a small thing. What are investing there for, uh, for them in prayer? It wasn't a small thing. But I decided. So you know, now to look at Koka. I have to choose God, and he was so infuriated. He was so mad, and he told me, "I will never date a born again girl again." Ah, so he was here. But less than a year later, I got Percy. Imagine if come and get one million for you. I'm saying, "Nilikuwa na beja next the way." I had to throw many things in the pit last week. Nilikuwa na beja yangu ni kwenye jam, and nilikuwa na make it. Come and take a kusa how you do. Vitu zote na kubai ya uzito pe kwacho. Haki dozwa. It was really hard. I keep a perfume. This muna pa kung tapia album noma. Kuna album ni YouTube pa kwa chow. Atas bini tosha. 
it was the hardest thing I had ever to do. So that I, I would forget him. You know when you are young in the spirit, am I in the things of God? Ukiambiwa, usikunyo chai, atindo ukunyo unwa kwa kwa unachana na chai. So mi niliyakwa nitupe vitu kwa cho, aki nilitupa. Tungwa likuwa menibaya zote zilienda kwa cho. Until today, I remember myself nikitoka kwa ye cho. Hapa kino, nikitoka kwa ye cho, the way I felt like I had, you know like I was mourning, it was really hard. But now from there, I'm going to see that you know the way you see me. How many people have ever been there? You miss someone so much, so the whole time. <laughs> I'm seeing many hands up. 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 So, you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing many hands up. I'm seeing many hands up. Siko na parfumi ya kutumia yake ndio nikumbuke the whole day it was so hard but God is amazing God made a way for me to come out of kino nitarudi kaiole kidogo kidogo JCC Nakuru was open and I went to JCC Nakuru and in seven months we can relocate huko uh, in less than a year nikakutana na this young handsome man and you know the rest is history you know so we go we are like a year later we got married and I thank God imagine now if I was stuck there with this person Sige kuwa hapa by the way. Ata pasi ya kuwa hapa. Most likely even him, he wouldn't be here. Because now, we needed to be together like that. We needed to be sent together. Because ya kona assignment ya kemi ni kona assignment ya ku. I would have missed out so much. But you know, iyo time kama unge ni ambienda saha uyo mse aki ni ngekata. I would have called you a liar. Because I knew my world and the whole world and God and heaven and the earth and everything. You hope that out him. Ni kwa nona kasi enzi pumua bila eh. But I really thank God that I obeyed. So the question is, if God tells you to leave someone that you're dating, and I'm talking to the single girls, if God tells you to leave someone that you're dating, someone that you have invested so much, sometimes it could even be someone that you have a child with. Eh, your baby daddy. As in, muli, muli jipatatum kona mtoi, and then God is like, mm -mm, this one is not the right person. Would you obey God? I'm telling you, you would rather obey God than fight against God. Because uzuri wa God ni, number one, at a hill hat yako. Number two, he knows tomorrow. So when he's telling you to leave a person today, say te nataka umie, say te nataka, he's not a sadist, ati nataka kukona nga kile usiku kilia, ndi okura ye, akwe na sewa hehe kanalia. It makes him sad to see you cry. But he goes like, okay, cry today, but I know two years from now, three, four, four, five years from now, I know that you will find someone better, someone who will respect you, someone who will love you, because me, ukiniuliza sahi, I would have made a big plan. Leave alone, hata kukua kwa wili ya God and everything. I don't know, maybe right now, it would be a mother of five or something. I don't know, he loves children. So, na kwa wili kwa tushichana, but then ili kwa na tushichana twingi. It is a joke. Blunder, a huge blunder, and one thing, the main thing, I would really be sad because number one, until today, I don't think he has ever gotten saved. So, meaning, at a mimi na child, she loved to get married. Because there are men when you get married to them, when you get married, you know what? I'm in church dinner. I have all my own. Either you can have a man, when they go to church, and now what do you do? You've already been married to such a person. And even if you came to us and told us, we cannot do anything. Our hands are tied. So you made your bed, you have to lie on it. So may the Lord help us. <laughs> so please, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Go to the house and say, Who is it? Yes. I'm going to say, Who is it? I'm going to say, Who is it? Yes. I'm going to say, Who is it? Amen. Hey, when you say, Amen. 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 Next time, maybe, maybe the summer next time, see now. Uh, <laughs> so, so, we went to Ruth to Noah. Uh, so, the fourth one is Ruth, and not this Ruth, the Ruth in the Bible. But even this one has been preserved for a move of God. Amen. Amen. When things are coming, I'm telling you. You just never know it's going to be Wafula. Wafula is good for a month. Eh, it's still a month. Eh, if the will of God is Wafula for her, we'll be happy for her. Brother, I'm going to church. Eh, I hear protocol. I hear protocol. I hear protocol. Wafula. Eh, 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 eh. They will make a very good thing. Wow, 
halisi kabisa kabisa kwa hiyo ya mbele au tutotototo tutotototo tukikaa na mzazo hapo katikati katikati is good rules katikati is good sawa so rules matthew chapter 1 from verse 5 to 6 aha Matthew 5 uh, from verse Okay Matthew chapter 1 from verse 5 to 6 So Solomon Solomon okay. Solomon Solomon where did Solomon come from Sawa Solomon Ah this one ni kwa kwa kula bado Sawa Solomon want to go Solomon begot so boys by Rehab Boys begot Obed by Ruth Obed begot Jesse And Jesse begot David the king And then It's okay it's okay. I think I just needed verse five. So Solomon the father of Boaz whose mother was Rahab, Boaz the father of Obed whose mother was Ruth, Obed the father of Jesse and Jesse the father of King David. Imagine we all know the story of Ruth. How Ruth was like now was married to to uh to mtoto nani mtoto um what her name? Naomi, thank you. Rado na nyangalia tukumbuke tayari. She lost her husband together with her offer, her moyu, you know, wameluzu wameluzu mabwana zao. And then now, instead of her being left uh, in Moab, she decided, I'm going with my mother-in-law. And wameenda na mother-in-law yake. And and now me, she could not understand why this girl was following her. She even tried to convince her to stay back in Moab. She's like, even if I get another child, I will never get a child. I grow up na kuoe ndio akuwe bwana yako. So she could not understand why Ruth was following uh, was following her to go back home. But I thank God because she did. Me I know she she had the, the spirit of God in her as if she could not even have understood kwa nini ana need kwenda but she had a burden for her mother in law and they went together. And because of the decision that she made because of following the leading of God. Right now so many years later we can still talk about Ruth in the uh, in the genealogy of Jesus. So when when the Bible is talking about Jesus, when the Bible is talking about King David, utapatana na jina ya Ruth why? Because she followed the leading of God. Imagine if she decided to stay behind na ende akaolewe. Angeolewa tu, lakini sasa story yake ingekuwa inishia hapo. And you know when I was doing a study on this I realized when when uh, we're talking because at that time it, it was all about the Jews. When you look at the the only people who are gentiles in the, in the genealogy of Jesus, especially women, it is Ruth and Rahab, the prostitutes. Imagine if she did not make that decision, where would she be today? If she allowed to hear because in my in her head, I know alikuwa na alikuwa na 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 uh contradicting thoughts. Kuna nini kuna mmoja anamwambia hapana ka nyumbani just go get married and and wendele na life yako. But in her in her mind in her spirit she could hear hapana you need to follow your mother. And I thank God because she followed her mother in law because of that and she became uh, she, she she was mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So may we be those people when there we don't make decision out of what we are seeing on the ground because many times and especially when it comes to marriage people refuse to get married to some men because of what they are seeing on the ground there are men who, before they get married i'm telling you what telling you ambie nichobe kuna mtu kama tena tukisema majina sio sio kama wako area but there is a guy what telling you ambie there is a guy in this church he may not look like um, all of that but when i look at him Eh when I look at him what they didn't want when that time comes you guys are telling you need to am here and I as if you know the way you can look at a single man and you know kitu mbango amepakisha tu ni nini kupikiwa akipikiwa tu vizuri hapo ni sisi ni kulipa kwa sababu sasa bado rate ni kwa njoto sisi ni wa kuli vizuri but there is something that happens when a man gets married there is something that happens akianza kupikiwa vizuri anza kupikiwa tunguo pasi <laughs> no, not for now, for before. As in, just give them time. As in, hata kama ni wiki mbili tu, waende honeymoon warudi. You see even Glenn, the way you're seeing him right now. Eh, when you're making your vizuri, before he got married, he was not the same way. I'm not I don't mean he wasn't getting dressed well. I don't mean he looked thin or anything, but there's something that changes. There's a glow. Yes. There's a glory that comes on a man the minute they go they get married right the minute they have a caring wife a godly woman a god fearing woman something totally changes thank god i didn't say that thing holy spirit asante but is what are you you are in you know are in that there are two like this uh, what shall i do i can't wait amen thank you for being in the spirit i cannot wait for them to get married i mean like you know that you told me I'm telling you those people when they get married nitakuja niwaambie mnakumbuka wana sema niwaambie I they change totally you will see what are the pastor muta akitaka ni mwana kuna kona tu ninawishi naweza msema tu lakini hata nisimchome 
the trouble. What to talk a honeymoon when I'm doing in Baka, you are like, hey, what happened? Where were you? Baka, you should have to go and be aware. Where have you been all this time? Because they look like a visitor. Hey. But then you want be never despise a man because of how he looks like. Yeah. Never, 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 never. I do not know yet in Kisomo, I just saw my Kutosha. I'm a Kunabena Mari Poa. I'm a Kunabena, maybe a kid with Pitya, if we even ask him to have a good domo. Girls, we know how to take care of that. To know what to get in Zamba, I want to take a Zeka. So do not despise a man at it because, oh, maybe I'm a job. When we were getting married, Pasi did not even have a job. Leave alone having a job, and you want to see Kuao. As in, if I looked at him, but I just came out of Akisema, when you want to be to go over. Well, if you talk about who you are, you told me, I'm here to tell me, but I can't, and as a job of Missouri, and you want to be a kid, you can't be a kid. You know, for me, you swear, and you know what is of your two? What are they called? A Timberland, thank you. A Timberland that was really, it looks like it was bigger than him, but anyway. <laughs> You can't ask me back and say, I'm going to ask Grace. The one said it. So, see me as I'm do. And then he would wear t-shirts. You know, they are t-shirts. My good boy. As you can see, t-shirts. I'm going to wear t-shirts. I'm going to wear t-shirts. I'm going to wear And my jeans. I'm going to wear too. And all of that. And you know what version? I'm going to wear Peter. You're 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 going to wear Peter. So, anyway. Imagine if I looked at him and despised him, and then he was a tent carrier. You know, Paul was a tent maker, he was a tent carrier. <laughs> so, at Sunday school, when we saw my angel and Kapale, so when we pick him up, pay my church, and then when I took my tent to a store, when the Zimbabwe was in the airport, when the Zimbabwe was in the airport, when the Zimbabwe was in the airport, he would wash toilets, he would wash the church, he would make tea, as in Kazi Amikono, and Koke Wayeme Okoli, as in Kazi Amikono, and Kwa Napana. So by the time church in Aisha sweat, it go all over the place. But anyway, when I looked at him, by then I wasn't even looking at him for a marriage, for a marriage, I'm for a husband. I wasn't even looking to get married. Me was just enjoying life and just doing it for Jesus. But now, when it came time for him, when he asked me out, I didn't know I was just, I wasn't even I didn't even notice by the way. I didn't even notice the t shirts and the baggy trousers and the big shoes and all of that. I did not notice. Imagine if I did. And then we do say yo, yeah, we do anakuru, we meet on Kanai. So we go to the weekend. Do so, we have a tour. We go to Kanai. 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 We is there even a guarantee that I would be married? See, there isn't. Would I have gotten babies? Oh my God, I love babies. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to pay for my tihani. Because I'm not going to pay for my tihani. I'm not going to pay for my tihani. Because I love babies. You know, and then she's really not going to be able to get it. And it's why you think it's a boy. Eh, you know what I mean? So please, So anyway, But anyway, I thank God because Ruth did not use her eyes, her physical eyes, to look at the situation and to get it and to make a, a kind of decision. Because that would have been a kind of decision. That was not the will of God. But she followed the will of God. And I can almost maybe speculate and say, would it be that she got married before Opa? Her sister in law. Yeah. It is very possible yeah. that she got married before her sister in law. Because sister in law, her sister in law, and her sister in law, sister in law, and her sister in law, and her sister in law, and her sister in law. So, maybe if she got married like uh, uh, shortly, could it be maybe a little bit of a family? We don't know her story, but I really thank God for this because she had God and she obeyed. So may we be those kind of women when, yeah, God, I can say, my job, my plan, you see, I can do it, you don't even have the capital. And as I say, many times when we have a leading to begin a business, 
tunaelewa kutafuta makapito kubwa kubwa so if you don't have your kapito kubwa kubwa you go like you keep on waiting and waiting and waiting begin where you are make that decision if you know that it is god who is speaking to you make that decision and run with it number 5 esther let's see esther number 4 esther 4:14 esther chapter 4 verse 14 You guys, did you hear someone here receiving the Holy Spirit on Sunday? Oh my God, was that powerful? Yes. It was really powerful. Kuna mtu hapa. Mkumbusha kale ya. Mbona mtu? Okay, siku mtu kale ya ubara, but mimi mtu kale ya. Yeah, they received the Holy Spirit on Sunday. Paul akila niko na kitu ya kuchomea watu. Ala apologize later. But this is for you, for, for your aunt. Lea, that time she was telling God, I will go to the nations. <laughs> so there are no options here but the nations <laughs> she received the holy spirit and now i think she could repeat after i am trying to pray for her i'm still going to go out there and she say i will go to the nations i will go to the nations so there you have to go to the nations keep her accountable nimekwambia ndio keep her accountable continue praying for her but i know god has great plans for her life atamtumia in a mighty mighty way so esther for 14 the bible says Uh, for if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for we'll for the I wish I could have some of pamoja so if you remain completely silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews to for another place but here when your father comes to perish there is no way whether you have come to the kingdom of God at that time Amen. The story of Esther majority of us will know it kuna joke na Esther and Joker Esther did she have parents she was an orphan girl And then as an orphan girl akachukuliwa na some some bible version say that she was a cousin to Mordecai and then others say that that uh, that, that uh, she was a niece to Mordecai so whichever it was because some maybe maybe according to to the to the what uh, to the culture back then maybe it meant the same thing i'm not sure but whether she was a cousin or or a niece whichever it was It is not a coincidence for Mordecai to have taken Esther from wherever she she, she was from because it had to do kama Esther alikuwa anaishi na wazazi wake in the same place kwenye Mordecai alikuwa but all the bible talks about is how she was an orphan girl and how Mordecai took her and t- took care of her could it be that God allowed for the parents to die not God killed them but he allowed it to happen because Mordecai needed to raise uh, her, uh, Esther in the ways of the law in a way that she can grow up and then end up becoming a queen could it be kama ngere is one of the wazazi wake angekuwa suited and the poor a good match for the king but in all of that mess that was happening god made sure that that Esther ended ended up in the hands of Mordecai and i can make sure that she ended up to be a queen for reason to save the jews because mm-hmm. imagine if she was not in the picture the day that that, that Haman alikuwa amesema jews wote waungiwe they would have been killed mm-hmm. maybe not all of them but majority because not all the jews defend but maybe majority of them would have been killed But when when uh, wazazi wa wanani wa Esther alikuwa anazaliwa Esther akizaliwa when they were dying when all of that was happening God and God anajua you are going to one place only one place so that you can save my people the Jews could it be that you are born for a reason and that one is not a could it be it is you are born for a reason the things that you've gone through in your life are for a reason whether you have gone through loss whether you have lost your parents whether you have lost your siblings whether you have lost whoever could it be that hizo vitu zote zilikuwa zinakuleta to one place but the question is hata kama zilikuwa zinakuleta to one place will you miss out on that opportunity because for Esther Mordecai alijuma na akasema could it be that you have come to this place for such a time as this because you know Esther angefika mahali na aseme hapana the way it is supposed to be you are not supposed to approach the king without the king someone in you and it should have been warranted that is the truth hawako nakubalisha even the wife himself i mean herself hawako nakubalishwa kwenda ku approach king kama king like that mana akakuita she would have decided to walk up the spirit of fear would have entered her and say me uh-uh, i don't want to die let me stay but you think she would have still died if she didn't approach the king would she have died yes why she was a jew she would have died eh it is all the jews the, 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 the decree that was like released i'm a sent out by her man it equal for all the jews to be uh, killed so if hana did not stay and at hana where is hana coming from esther <laughs> if esther did not take her position and go approach the king 
and get that leading for praying for uh, praying and fasting for three days, and then go to the king and, and plead for her life. All of them would have died, including herself. So could it be who could this seek a queen for Ibizos? One of the kids too, the church too, the owner too, but after my birthday, you know, I could jump on the chair and I know this. I know this man. I could jump on the chair and push up the umbo, and you're thinking that is it. It cannot be it. I believe everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You are here for a reason. It could be God and a crazy harper so that He can take you to 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 the nations, like our dear beloved girl, <laughs> our nation minister. <laughs> She's going to the nations. Could it be? Imagine it is amazing. Do you know it is not? A, it will not be a surprise for me. Kuski and Leah next year, I'm going to have a dream. Yeah. It is very possible. Yeah. We will not be surprised. Yeah. But could it be God and Mweka Jesus for what happened on Sunday? Yeah. So that if she is not here and she has gone wherever God is taking her, she is going with that word and she is going with the spirit speaking in tongues with that enablement. Mm -hmm. And so that God can take her to the nations as she was speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. You're getting to see to kuli kitu wote at kwakiwa kawaida too at things that happen. Is that the two church? Nasikia someone to break kid over and the home Monday in answer. Mm -mm. Ka, ka kijuliza, kila saa. Why is this happening today? Why am I here today, Velma? Why are you having that baby now? You didn't get married today. You didn't get married this year. Why now? Sometimes uh, couples, they think, oh, me, I want to stay for two years before getting a baby and all of that. Will it be it was in the plan of God all along? You are thinking it's a good idea, but God is like, for that baby to be born, square ya chazaliwa. Akuna kitu na happen ingi falls. If you do, when it comes to believers, nothing happens just like that. So I really thank God for each and every one of us. So number six, send your neighbor me. Yes. So number six is me. That is me and you for you, Jeriki and me here. So God preserved you from so many things. Things many times. Ata to join the mumbo to preserve from name. Mary, could it be that you would have died without marriage? You could have died. <laughs> <laughs> you could have died in that marriage. You just never know what the devil is planning. Maybe the next thing, or here and there, you go, oh, you can still happen with them. I my kids a good one. I think you still I was telling her, hey, Wiki, Namuliza, is it a coincidence that she is not married? Yeah. Is it a don't take it as a kawaii thing that until now she's she's very young and she will get married and know in the plan of God in, in God's time. But I was telling her not to, to trivialize the fact that she is not married as of now. Because mm -hmm. I know all of us are beautiful, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But kuna wengine wa uko inje when you are jokoka. Kuna wengine wa uko inje. Kama ajaolewa at some point you go like, yeah, I understand. Maybe their behavior is really bad. Maybe, maybe what? Maybe they don't want to get married. Maybe, maybe they, there are some things that is not going to be But I was telling you. <laughs> I was telling her what is the reason behind it. Could it be that God has preserved her all this time for her to be here? Could it be that her husband will come from here? Yeah. <laughs> your husband are not, the, are not in DC. Your husband is not doing well. Your husband is not in Akuru. Your husband is here. Could it be that is the reason? <laughs> So many times, we don't understand. And she has been telling me, and I wish God and the Kwana to have a template. For her, she has been in ministry for so long, as in for, for many, many years in the Lucas Church. And then, I come to say, she do ministry China. And I can do a kid over the part of the ACC. She's doing ministry now all over again. And I'm telling her, everything happens for a reason. We may not understand. God may not give us a template. In 2000, he will do A, B, C, D. In 2001, in 2005, and God has given by I want you to walk by faith. I want you to trust that I have your best interest at heart. I want you to know that you need to do it. You need the rest for him. You're getting it. 
So many times, tunatebianga kwa barabara and we cross roads and, and we go home. Many times we, we use matatus that were meant to have accidents. Na tu juangi, I'm telling you, if God were to open our eyes, tuwana vitu zene zinapa kufanika, we would die. Very young. We would die. Because we get so scared. And someone was telling me the other time, I don't know this person, someone was telling me, if God opened our eyes to see even the, 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 the demonic, uh, the demonic what, the demonic activity that is happening even in front of us every time, the way they want to the way they want to go to the bar, and they just thinking that they want to go to the he tries and there is a miss, he tries to go to the bar, as in, if you are to see those realities, we would die in the end. So God na kwa kazile za leave the, the, the spiritual realm alone and just deal with what you can see. Because to be honest of you, I'm telling you, it will, maybe to mekwa na ma heart attack, to mekwa na, na ulcers and all of that, because it's a scary one, you know. So, there are so many things that God who wanted to lead na kutoka na nazo. Maybe it's a road accident, maybe it's a, a building falling on you, maybe it's fire, whatever it is. God does it for a reason, not for us to just feel space. Not for us to just grow old, not for us to just raise children. There is a reason for you why you are alive today. So let me give you a few benefits and we are done. Uh, benefits of knowing that you are preserved for a reason and for a season. Benefits of knowing that you are preserved for a reason and a season. You are preserved for a reason and a season. So, number one. So that you can train yourself to appreciate the gift of life. So that you can train yourself to appreciate the gift of life. So I'm just giving you a few benefits. I believe they are they're just three. Yes. So that you can uh, you can train yourself to appreciate the gift of life. So that you don't take it casually that you are alive. Unafikira tu nikitu ya kawaida tu. So that you can appreciate the gift of life. So Job, Job chapter 12 verse 10. Job 12 10. The Bible says... In whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. So your life and the, 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 your breath and every living thing, it is in the hand of the Lord. And then Acts 17 verse 28. Acts 17 verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our existence, as even some of your own poets have said, for we, uh, we also are his children. We live and move our, and, and have our being. Uh, because of Jesus Christ, because of what he does for us every day. So, number one, so that you can train yourself to appreciate the gift of life. What are to say to Kulia casually, the gift of life every day? Waking up every morning, the Bible says that his masses are new every morning. Waking up every morning should be a joy, it should be like, hey, thank God for another day. We know that he has given us a long life, but every day wake up with that revelation of God. I know I didn't have to be alive. I know I didn't have to wake up, but you have given me another gift today to just wake up and enjoy my life and, and just live for you. Number two, so that you can learn to redeem time. So that you can learn to redeem time. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, 14 to 17. So that you can learn to redeem time. To wate kukua time wasters. To wate kukiri time, eh? Uh, verse 15, Nasema, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act, uh, that is, I think in NLT most likely. Which I think in NLT, come as it right. Uh, yes? Ephesians 5, 14 to 17. Oh, never ask. Yes, Ephesians 5, 14 to 17. Uh, we'll put it in the NLT class now, thank you. So be careful how you live. Huh? Okay, I don't know which version I put. But anyway, let me read for you. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in this evil days. Don't act uh, thoughtless, thoughtlessly. It's a word. <laughs> but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So have that understanding every day and don't be a time waster. I'm telling you there are so many things you can waste in this life and get them back. You can waste an opportunity and get it back. You can waste a relationship and get it back. But when you waste time, you can't get it back. The time that passes a day, when you are uh, to what was it? The, the school of ministry, yes. When you are to drama, you can't get that time again. What you can get is the notes or the, the audio to listen to. But you can't get that time again. And then number three, you follow the leading. So that you can follow the leading of God. So that you can follow the leading of God. And this one, you have seen it uh, in Ruth as well. She followed the leading of God and then ended up being in the genealogy of Jesus. 
and allowing the Gentiles to be in that uh, in that genealogy. I mean that lineage. So uh, Daniel chapter two verse forty four. Daniel two forty four. Uh, you can put it in the NLT. During the reign of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. Is that what it says? Oh, yes. Sounds our. So, to sum up, I want to go. During the reigns of those kings. During the reigns of those kings. Uh-huh. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom. The Jordan will be the first of all. The Jordan will be the first of all. Amen. The kingdom of God will stand forever. So let us follow the, the leading of God so that we can be found uh, for that. So 1 Corinthians 10 31. Just a few more verses. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 10 31. Ruth, that one can say it open. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Amen. Your living is for the glory of God. Whatever the decisions you make, every, your every day should be for the glory of God. Amen. I have the next one is 2 Peter 3 9. We are almost done. 2 Peter 3 9. And 2 Peter 3 9. Um, a good summary. Uh huh. Amen. God's ultimate goal is not for us to get rich, for us to get married, for us to, to, to have these earthly things. His ultimate goal is for us to get to know him, to spread the gospel. Because the Bible says that we seek, he, we seek the, uh, the, the kingdom of God and the rest shall be done what? Yes, the rest shall be added unto us. That one is in Matthew 6.33. You can write it down and then I talk about Psalm 8 from verse 4 to 9. You can read it in the New King James Version. Psalms 8, 4 to 9. To Psalm 8, 4 to 9. To Psalm 8, 4 to 9. What is man that you are mindful of him? Uh huh. And the son of one man that you visit him. Uh huh. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Kidogo, and attack to to ukisoma. Don't say what is man that you are mindful mindful of him. Say what is Kate? Yes, say your name, senior, because we are talking about you right now. So what is Kate that you are mindful of? Her and the son of man that you visit her. <laughs> For you have made me. It's me. For you have made me a little lower than the angels. You have crowned me with glory and honor. You have made me to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under my feet. Amen. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the path of the sea. Number nine. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. And that is how, sorry, Bethel. That is how we have been taught to pray. I mean, even to, read, to to pray using the word of God. So you don't say, what is man? You say, what is Kate? What is Ruth? What is BT? What is Anne? Well, Amma, who is Anne? That you are mindful of her. Because God is so mindful of us. For us to be here today, for us to, to be alive today, for us to have what we have, for us to have even a dream, to look forward to the things that we are looking forward to. It has taken the hand of God. It will continue to take the hand of God in Jesus' name. So kindly, with the joy of the Lord, let us stand up so that we can get to pray together and conclude our meeting. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Amen. So do you think that you're here for a reason? Yes. That you have been preserved for a reason? Yes. Are you looking forward to see what God has for you? Yes. I know God has great things for us. We may not see them today because we are limited that way as human beings. But God has greatness awaiting for us. So I want us to hold our hands two by two and let us just pray for each other. That whatever you're listening to a sermon, you're listening to a word, there is one sentence, there is one thing, and yeah, in a kwanga take away who miyako. Kuna kitu mwote ne goda ni kwa natakao skie leo. So whatever it is that you needed to hear today and you've heard it, 
and it is for you, and you are using it for where you are going, just pray concerning that word and tell God, Father, I pray that you may help me to number my days so that I may make good decisions in my life. I pray, Jesus, that I will not trivialize the gift of time, the gift that you have given me every day, the gift of life, being able to wake up every morning. It is not by chance. It is not an accident. Thank you, Lord, because you did not create me for nothing. You created me for a reason and for a season, for such a season as this, so that I can serve you, so that I can live for you, so that I can dedicate my life to you, my God, so that I can win souls for your kingdom. May I not be a time waster in the name of Jesus. May I not be a person who just sleeps and, and, and stays and wakes up and, and like without having any reason for living, my God. The purpose that you created me for, may I be able to understand it. And may I live my life to please you, to glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your daughters. May you help us, O oh Lord. The same way you so fit for us to receive this word today. May you help us from now onwards, from where you are taking us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall not be time wasters. We shall not be found lazy around. We shall not be found killing time. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, because you created each and every one of us for a reason. The reason why we did not die when we were in our mother's womb. The Bible says that you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. The reason why you preserved us, O oh Lord. The reason why you took us from the mighty clay. Father, we know, we know, we know, we know. In Karabashaya, it was for a reason. May you help us, Lord, that by the time we come to you, at a good old age, my God, we will stand before you and you will call us faithful servants, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, because we fulfilled our assignments, because we were not time wasters, because, Lord, we followed your leading like Ruth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you have set us here for such a time as this. Like Esther, my God, the same way you preserved her, my God, even when her parents died, you preserved her for a reason so that she could save the, the Jews from dying, from being killed by Haman. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your daughters. When it comes to making decisions, I pray, Spirit of God, that your voice, your voice will be louder than every other voice. That your instructions to us, my God, to our inner man, will be louder than every other instruction. That 